Hello, hello, hello. It is Eighth House Goddess, and I am back with a um, oracle reading that I was actually doing for myself. But it just came out so good that I was like, okay, let me just put this on video. Let's see. Move my knee out of the way because I want you to be able to see the card. So I chose cards from uh, Black Moon Lilith. Let's see. Can you see that? Black Moon Lilith. Oh my goodness, I love this deck. And um, and they came out all Scorpionic energy. Uh, and, you know, 8th house, Scorpio. I, I had to put it on, on video. Um, and then I chose from the uh, Pluto Oracle, which is also 8th house in Scorpio. And the cards that came out with it. Now, I didn't choose these. These are what popped out of the deck. I didn't bring the uh, Pluto Oracle over here. I don't know if I can reach back that far. Um, but the cards that came out popped out. They did. I didn't pull them out. Okay. So, I just thought that, you know, this was amazing, and so I would share it with you. Uh, listen, if this is your first time uh, logging into the channel, welcome in. Welcome in. If you have been here before, welcome back. Please make sure to give the video a thumbs up, uh, like, share, comment, you know the drill, and here we go. Okay, so the first card out of Black Moon uh, Lilith is Black Moon Lilith in Scorpio. Sexual Alchemy. Let's see if I can get you out of the glare. Sexual Alchemy. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, look at her. Okay, and the number of course is 8. For 8 house um, Scorpio being the eighth house now it says sexual alchemy learning how to transmute energy uh, with your sexual energy and nobody talks about that or we don't talk about it a lot learning how to transmute the energy there is so much power in our womb there's so much power in our womb uh, male and female, but primarily female at this at this point I'm talking to. Uh, there's so much power in your womb. And bringing together um, that sexual energy in the second chakra, in the sacral chakra, is important to know how to do. Now the card that came out of the Pluto article, which is for shadow work, was the devil. <laughs> I love that. Which is Scorpio. This the number 13, right? The devil card. Hopefully you guys can see. Okay, that might look a little bit better. Hopefully you'll be able to. You can see it. The devil card came out. So now we're talking about transmuting and transforming and um, uh, uh, transformation of energy of shadow work of um, that scorpionic sexual you know that we have it we have it without even trying to have it we have it without putting forth a whole lot of effort you know you just come across as being sexual and sensual when people come into our presence and so it's something about taking the negative energy taking the uh, trying situations and transmuting that energy through our sacral chakra into right this uh, into energy that we can utilize for our good for the good of mother earth for the good of our ancestors for the good of our family for the good of our loved ones taking that energy and not getting stuck right in the negativity that people send our way in the negativity that we come up with in our own minds because we are thinkers. 
we are we will analyze something honey to the very end okay we will analyze the analyticals okay and so in this uh, black moon Lilith in Scorpio and I'm gonna pull the book that came with the Oracle just to give you an idea um, and it's number eight and it it, it talks about, in the book, it talks about the shadow work. And that's the, the thing that's most important. It says, divine feminine shadow work, dark divine fem feminine shadow work. Heal your divine feminine sexual magnetism by releasing any shame you have around this primal side of yourself. Any shame, look, we're going to talk about that shame. Incorporating moments for self-pleasure, sex magic, and self-love can help you navigate it. Now that's for the dark divine feminine. Let's talk about that for a moment. Pretending that he has just cracked your back when you know he didn't do a doggone thing. Come on now, we've got to be open enough. To say, baby, I need you too. Sweetheart, I would like for you too. This is not, you know, feeling the way I would like for it. It would be better if, right? And not being ashamed to say what it is that we want. What it is that we desire. What it is that we feel like we need in that moment. Okay. So that's what we want to work on. Transmuting that energy of shame and doubt and fear and embarrassment, transmuting that energy into, no, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is what feels good, this is what is pleasurable, this is what makes me, let me show you, <laughs> right? Let me show you how to uh, pleasure me. Let me show you what feels good to me, okay? Because sometimes just, you know, we're not very good at giving instructions. Sometimes I, I think I'm very good at giving instructions. However, not everybody is. So, um, you know, if you fall in that category, not a problem as long as we uh, deal with the shame of saying what it is that we desire. Okay. For the dark, divine, masculine shadow work dealing with the black moon. Uh, Lilith in Scorpio, it says you have a deep sense of power, but it's important not to control others with it. Practices like breath work and solitary uh, meditation can help integrate any crisis you have experienced in your life. And then for all of us, it's time to dive deep into your darkest shadow. Tap into your sexual power and magnetism to heal. Because there is healing, there is manifestation in our sexual, sensual energy. That water alchemy, the water sign of Scorpio in that eighth house. That uh, ebb and flow of energy, right? That we have to know how to maintain, I won't say control, but maintain within our own selves so that we are careful not to utilize it to control others. Because it's very easy for Scorpio, Scorpios operating in that Scorpionic energy to utilize that energy to control others. Hence, we have the devil in the Pluto card. Uh, oracle cards. We want to make sure that we are transmuting that energy, transforming that energy, not utilizing it to control, but utilizing it to be transformed, to be renewed in our uh, mind, in our spirit, in our energy. Okay? Okay, here we go. And that just... That, let me tell you something, that blessed my whole soul. I'm just saying. <laughs> something about that water flow um, in the sacral, you know, in the sacral chakra, in the womb, that we are all born from. That we are all born from, right? That, um, that if we tap into it, we can create anything in our lives that we desire. Okay. Neptune. 
says magic, uh, imagination, and illusion. This number 30, Neptune, magic. Can you see it? Okay, number 30, magic imagination and illusion again talking about manifestation talking about uh, neptune is that planet of uh, dreams and, and and fantasy and and quick action right so that once we have birth in our in our womb space yes and neptune is also uh, deals with that scorpionic energy once we have birthed it in our womb space, then we become the master magician, right? The master manifester. The card that came out of the Pluto, Pluto Oracle is the unicorn, right? Magic. <laughs> Wait a minute, right? Magic, the magician, the unicorn. That was amazing to me because I'm telling you, they just flew out. Okay. So then, in, uh, in Neptune, we're working with our imagination, with fantasy, right? Um, seeing what it is that we desire, and then bringing it into, you know, our right now reality. So, it says, you are a master magician. When the Neptune card shows up in an oracle reading, the universe wants to remind you of your natural superpower. That's Scorpio all day long. That's eighth house all day long, right? A natural superpower, a natural, sensual, sexual being, okay? Take time to dive into your spiritual alchemy and manifestation practice, which takes us right back to... Uh, our sexual alchemy and the devil, our manifestation um, power, not taking those outside influences, right? But utilizing what it is that we envision that we want. Okay. It says when we work with our imagination and treat fantasy as reality, the universe can pick up exactly what we want and create synchronicities to make it happen. I love that. So this unicorn, this fictitious uh, uh, animal, right, that everybody loves. Unicorns are rainbows and love and light and flowers and sunflowers, and right? And they bring to pass your dreams, your desires, your manifestation okay all right and then the last card that came out was pluto mm -hmm. love it which again is scorpio it says endings and regeneration endings and regeneration for scorpio okay for pluto number 31 number 31 and Pluto is that planet of uh, death and rebirth, right? Death and rebirth. Love it. Okay. <laughs> and it says, um, misalignment can manifest physically as that uneasy feeling in the pit of your stomach, right? Pluto can sense this and likes to break everything down and remove what no longer serves you. It teaches us that beginnings and endings are intricately tied together. It is the natural cycle of life. Hidden wealth, inheritances, and debts are also a part of Pluto, indicating change in this area of life. Allow the transformative wave, we're in that water element of Scorpio, right? That transformative wave to pass over you. It will wash away the shadows. And the, the uh, Pluto Orca card that came out for that one was kangaroo. Now, there's a story about the word kangaroo or the name kangaroo that when, you know, people came to uh, 
to um, Australia and they saw this animal that, you know, was jumping and had a pouch and all of that. Now, listen, that's the female because that male kangaroo, he a bad boy. Like, oh my God, have y'all seen? <laughs> he looks like this. <laughs> when he stands up, look at that chest. That's what the male kangaroo looks like. Hopefully you guys saw the, uh, the, uh, um, video that was going around with the kangaroo trying to drown the dog, the man's dog. And so the man ended up fighting with the kangaroo and that kangaroo came out of the water looking like he man, like it's crazy. He looked just like that. Okay. <laughs> so, so the story goes that they see this animal and they ask, what is it? And the people said kangaroo. But that the word kangaroo means, what is it? Not They were not answering the question. They were translating <laughs> what they said. So that, that's the story. Look it up. I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, what is it? Right? When we're in that Pluto energy, it's like, what is happening? What is it? Right? Because it turns everything upside down. It can... It can cause you to feel like you were in a literal, right, uh, rebirth, if you will. So, it, it says, Pluto, we know, was the lord of the underworld, right? Presides of the lower realms of the earth and all of that. It says that Pluto is the planetary ruler of the fixed water sign of Scorpio. We know that. Scorpio rules alchemy. Right? That transmutation of energy. Scorpio rules alchemy, sex, death, rebirth, psychology, the occult, secrets, and transformation, which the whole our reading has been talking about. It is uh, that planet that can be difficult, but there's much to gain when your Pluto is integrated as it can unlock your soul's hidden riches. If you tap into your Pluto energy, and then it goes on to tell you where Pluto is in your chart, um, uh, in your birth chart, determines you know a lot of, um, uh, of information for you. But when I look at this spread, looked at this spread. Um, just understanding the power in that eighth house, the power in that scorpionic energy, the power in rebirth, um, in, in alchemy, in transforming, taking alchemy um, was the idea or I guess the, <laughs> the uh, changing of metal to gold. All right, yeah, changing a metal to gold, right? So taking something that is common and making it uh, something that is valuable, something that is uncommon, something that is worth so much more. So when we transmute that energy, it is worth so much more uh, in our lives. When we begin to move in our sexual alchemy, in our magic, which comes through our imagination and our illusion operating in that fantasy world not always right because people are going to think you're crazy but operating in that fantasy world so that we bring what is above what is in our mental we bring it into our right now reality sounds good i like it like it like it like it if this spoke to you at all please give the video a thumbs up um, leave me a comment. Uh, be sure to share and subscribe to the channel. And until we come together again, this is Ace House Goddess. And I am sending you all of the love and light. <laughs>